This one's for anyone who knows they have to be their own boss and start a business. Our guest Matthew Hintz and his college roommate wanted to make sure his roommate from Korea didn't have to go back to Korea and serve in the military when his visa was to expire. So they knew if they started a business, he could apply for a new business visa, and his life was literally on the line in order to make this business model work. They decided to get their first wholesale real estate deal where they made $30,000 in college by looking at properties that were to be inherited after the owner was deceased. This is this podcast for TEDx in your income and replacing your W-2 through wholesaling real estate. My name's David Lecko. I created a process that's helped 10,000 people close their first wholesale deal in all 50 states. And my co-host is Ryan Haywood, who made 8,500 bucks on his first wholesale deal in 2019. And he's done 425 deals now. Matthew, how did you make $30,000 on your first wholesale deal? Well, um... I wish it was as easy as it was back then, um, but me and my buddy were in college, and uh, he's from South Korea. Uh, he needed a business visa, and some buddies were reading some books about wholesaling, and they're like telling me about it, and I'm like, this is not real. Uh, this can't uh, actually be a thing, and um, over my spring break, uh, you know, I, we said, let's try it, and we drove down to Franklin, Tennessee, uh, the probate court, so Chancery Courthouse. And we went through, the old ladies let us into the back, and we flipped through all the files um, and pulled out all of the probate records, you know, back when we had to do it ourselves, and just wrote down everyone that was inheriting a house on on a piece of paper. And then we took a yellow notepad, and we hand-wrote all these people letters at Starbucks. I think we probably only sent out like 150 or 200 letters and our first deal uh, came from a lady who inherited a property from her dad. It had a reverse mortgage. It was going into foreclosure. She lived in North Carolina and hadn't seen him in years. And I don't know, man, we just told her we could buy it. Um, you know, we, we now tell people we'll wholesale it uh, for them. But back then, you know, we're just like, we're cash buyers and we're going to figure it out. She drove down and uh, we didn't know what we were doing. We brought in like a clipboard and like a sheet and we're like, you know, scribbling stuff as we stared at the walls and stuff. Um, and back then we had to find our buyer on connectedinvestors.com, um, which is practically, I, I don't know what they're up to now, but uh, we found uh, a great guy named Jeff who runs an excellent property management company out here who um, had a, a buddy of his who bought it out of an IRA. It was actually in Brentwood. Tennessee, which was a very, very high end market still is. So we actually put our first deal under contract to like 320 and sold it for 350. And I graduated Vanderbilt, um, and got paid like that week, 30 grand. We each paid ourselves like seven grand moved into like the dumpiest apartment you could ever find. It was like 500 bucks a month, left the rest of the company and just repeated, um, figured out foreclosure and it was really history from there. Uh, that was seven years ago though. So you had a friend who was from Korea and he needed a job. That's how. So yeah. So he was my roommate in college. He was at Belmont. I was at Vanderbilt. He's still a good friend. Um, and, and a great investor and flipper out here in Nashville now, but yeah, his vi visa was going to expire. So if he didn't get a business visa, he was going to have to go serve in the Korean military. Um, and so he's like, by all costs, we got to figure this thing out. And this was the only thing where it, it really seemed like magic, you know, 400, 300 bucks in mail stamps and you could make 30 grand. We really, and we really did. Um, and we just built a business. It was called Home Network Partners uh, back in the day. Um, made a lot of good connections, a lot of good friends. And 2018, 2017, um, Ran a couple other businesses from there, and, uh, but yeah, that's where we had the old college try, um, and it really worked. And you said you went to the courthouse and you found people that were going to be inheriting a property, right? Yeah, so we actually Information. went to probate court, uh, Chancery Court uh, in Tennessee is where it's at, um, and we uh, went into the Which back, Chancery. and Chancery is where you're going to get like your probation court. 
your uh, probate court, uh, conservatorships, um, it, you know, child support, stuff like that. It goes into our chancery court. Probate is in there and you can go up and, and, and Williamson County, it's a bunch of, you know, 50 to 60 year old sweet ladies. And we walked in and we're like, um, yeah, can we just go through all of the wills? Can we just go through all the petitions? And she's like, what? And we're like, yeah, can we just like, you know, we're here just to collect some data for work. And they're like, uh, yeah, I guess they'd really never had anyone ask. And you get, we went to this back room and they just pulled out these file cabinets and all the wills that had been filed um, were in there and we just read through them and we were like, okay, someone inherited a property here and we wrote it down and we just wrote the address they inherited and who inherited it. And honestly, we messed up a lot. Like we were mailing nursing homes because we just assumed that wherever someone died, that must be the home they owned. And so we were getting calls of like, Hey, it sounds like you want to buy my nursing home. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's like, you, you, you idiot. That's where my parents died. And I'm like, Hey, I'm so sorry. Like I, it's a mistake, but, um, yeah, I mean, we got, we got really blessed and really lucky, really believe in, you know, God and the power of the universe and stuff just to get us started and manifestation. And when there's a will, there's a way. So literally a will mm -hmm. was involved. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when it lists the will, did it have their contact info? Uh, it didn't, it just had their mailing address. So we were just mailing yellow letters. Um, I think some do nowadays. Um, and I don't want to give away any super secrets, but I mean, deal machines, deceased owners is obviously a great place to start a uh, lot of cross-referenced deceased owners and a lot of stuff that doesn't make it to probate. I'd be honest. In my experience with deceased people who sell are highly motivated, a lot of them don't know how to file probate. So you're going to miss a lot of great probate or inherited opportunities simply because they didn't file anything in, in the courts. But the courts do now oftentimes have the phone numbers for the people in probate and stuff like that. Um, so there's ways to find it if you really dig in and read a will. But back then, no, we were just mailing the mailing address for the petitioner. Just mailing it in. Yeah, when we started calling after that, I mean, manually down before dollars were really big, and that's great. I've heard it's good to hand dial now because the cell phones will say potential spam for numbers that are associated with many dialers. Yeah, yeah, we like uh, obviously smartphone and phone burner. Uh, both are uh, compliant, valid dialers. Um, what I really believe now is go with the realtors. Um, the realtors have been doing this stuff for thousands of years and they are successful at it. And yeah. we've always had like this kind of dichotomy of wholesalers don't work well with realtors or we're like enemies or more like it doesn't make sense. It's like we have a lot of hacks over here in the wholesaling crew, but realtors have incredible marketing tactics, relationship based uh, selling. They pick the phone up when you call where wholesalers, I don't know, it's kind of a joke of mine. Hey, do you think a wholesaler is going to call you back? Um, probably not. And that's definitely something that we could learn from realtors. But phone burner is used by like, you know, some of the top realtor groups in, in Tennessee. They actually have, we're going to try it this year, branded dialing too, where when you call them, it shows your logo when when they see you on the screen which is just you know how does that have how do you make that uh phone burner ask a man i mean it's just next level over there and then with smartphone yeah. the secret is so get um the carrier like i've got at&t and i've got smart blocker it's like an extra eight bucks on my phone so whenever i get a new line on smartphone or anything i call it and i see if it shows up as spam on mine right and if it does, yeah. I just delete that number and I get a new one because you'll eventually get one that not even the heaviest spam blockers are blocking, you know, download robocall or whatever, figure out how to get through that and then stick with that number and then only use that number for your follow-ups. Don't ever mass dial with a golden number. Like if you get an IP or a, uh, an ID that works, don't ruin it. You know, they say 30 seconds on the call. That info. Yeah, would, um, with that to make sure you're you're not ruining it, not making it so, up as spam. Yeah, so you want to stay, if you make a call and you get someone on the phone 
and they say no, try to keep the call for 30 seconds. So one of the things that will spam register your numbers is getting off the phone quickly. Um, Multi-line dialers are not great because they hang up on other people. So quick calls to hang up is another thing that'll get you spam registered very quickly. And then obviously don't be mean to someone who you know you're never going to talk to again because they it's so easy to report numbers as spam now. So report it on their cell phone. Right. And you don't want that to happen. Exactly. So, you know, again, keep a conversation at least 30 seconds so the carriers aren't seeing you just hang up on people a lot. That's number one to, you know, register your number through, um, you know, I think it's like realvalidation.com or something where it actually links it to your name. I definitely recommend for new wholesalers, register yourself under sole proprietor. Um, you can have an LLC, but if you get a number through like smartphone or Vonage, we're actually working on like building out Vonage APIs and stuff. Sole proprietors do not have a lot of the same restrictions as businesses for robocalling. You're allowed to do a lot of stuff as an individual that you can't as a business right now. So you're less likely to get in trouble if you're just Matthew Hintz. Obviously, you're losing the LLC protection, but you're also not going to get sued by the FTC for running a business that's using phones to call. So for new guys, read, you know, register your number or just use your, like he, like, David said, just use your personal phone. Um, and don't be afraid, uh, like don't call someone you don't want them to call you back, you know? Don't like make people mad, you know, make sure you have positive, happy conversations. So, you know, if anyone calls you back, hey, it's probably someone great. Um, I think there's, you know, a lot of common sense nowadays. I'm loving this, man. It's turned into a masterclass. All right. Do you have anything else you'd want to add? Um, I mean, get in front of people, right? I think we can all agree with that. Call, you can call all day, but uh, all of our sales happen at the door. Um, you know, I hate to say that we're a calling business because we're not. Um, we're actually a driving business and we're data driven. That's something that, you know, we believe in. Um, and so what we do is we actually, and man, this is gold, myroute.com, like 20 bucks a month. You can take all of your leads and, and my business partner will probably kill me for saying this because we don't do it anymore. We use uh, Salesforce, but back in the day and for years, you just download your list, right? Your pre-foreclosure list, right? Whatever list. And you plug it into my route and then you just drive to all the houses and you knock on the doors, right? And you just say, hey, I'm here to help. And while you're doing it, you use Deal Machine and you drive a route. So a lot of guys, when you can get purpose behind your, your driving for dollars, when you can actually drive for dollars on the way to another lead, we're getting 60 to 70% contact rates in foreclosure. You know, we'd say probably 20 to 30% of contact rates on the phone, right? Deal Machine can route you to a list of properties in the most efficient way with GPS directions to allow you to make the best use of your time, whether it's a tax delinquent list that you pulled from Deal Machine and want to drive and door knock to get a better response rate than mailing or cold calling. Or if it's a list that you've actually got somewhere else and you want to import it to Deal Machine, it's a perfect feature that you already have access to if you have the app. And if you don't, you can start a seven day trial at dealmachine.com slash pod and get $35 on us of free mail. 60 to, you could pull like people who recently deceased owner list, right? Mm -hmm. And then you would actually like go to those properties and drive to all those properties. Right. So you pull your tailored list. Again, some of the big features that we're really experimenting with Deal Machine on includes loan to values. So we love the fact that we now can see loan to value and we can see estimated value. So first thing, know your market, right? If you're not doing deals uh, on houses over $500,000, then don't pull a list with houses over $500,000, right? Like one of the ways that we always teach our team is with dating analogies, right? Like if you're going to walk into a bar and I'm married, so I'm, I'm sure my wife is probably listening. Uh, this is not something I would ever do now, but if you're going to walk into a bar, bar and pick out a date, you're, you're not going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to see all these girls in here and I'm going to treat them equally, right? You're going to say, I'm going to look for the one that I really feel like I could connect with the most. It makes the most sense with my ethos and my mission. And I'm going to go talk to her first. Well, that's exactly how you should approach your deals. 
if you aren't working luxury houses, then don't call them or treat them the same on your list. Secondly, you can't, no matter how much you help or what they say about novations or short sales or this, you can't help anyone with more than 75% LTV. You can't because you're not going to be paid enough and you're going to be sweating and giving them two grand and you three grand. If you want to make the 30 plus thousand dollar deals, their loan to value has to be 70 to 50%, right? So yeah, pull that secret list, whether it's uh, deceased owners with 50% loan to value, under $500,000 estimated value in one neighborhood that I know I've got buyers in, right? You're literally talking about like a brick, like a zip code block, right? Mm -hmm. All right. You've got 50 houses in that neighborhood. Okay. You know that everyone in there needs help because someone died in their family. That's loss of income. That's bad memories in the house. That's deteriorating health, right? Two peas in a pod. And yeah, you export that list and deal machine. You upload it into my route. You put your start destination as your house and you go knock on those houses. And while you do it, you get your deal machine in real time and you make the effort to pull over to the side of the road whenever you see a house that is ugly or you know needs work, right? Um, obviously, the E grade, D grade, um, property gradings is something that we're experimenting with, but. I'm sure everyone here knows you cannot beat looking at a house in person and just having that feeling like this is a deal. Totally. Um, mm -hmm. And you started by going in person. And and what did you do after you made that 30000 You said you moved into an old apartment. You paid 7000 each, right? And then you kept the rest for... Yep, exactly. Uh, so we paid for, for, for more marketing? For, yeah, we didn't know what. And... Uh, yeah. So what we did is, and that was significant. Did you quit banner build at that point? I just graduated. <laughs> yep. So I just, just graduated. graduated. Exactly. So I had an offer at Merrill Lynch, um, to be a financial advisor. My mom's like, oh, you're amazing. Take it. And I was like, no, I'm going to do this business and I'm going to live in this shack that floods all the time. And, you know, and we're going to, and I was reading a lot of, you know, Thoreau and, and Emerson and stuff and, and doing a bunch of stuff that I shouldn't have been doing and figuring life out. But I um, started a, we just had a, I was using my phone, you know, it was the only way. And we were pulling foreclosures and skip tracing them um, with white pages, which shout out white pages. We still use white pages for deep <laughs> prospecting to this day. Deal Machine is on with deep prospecting too. We're having our VAs experiment with the deep prospecting and what by I mean by deep prospecting it's definitely a buzzword for 2024 that's when you have exhausted trying to reach someone call their friends call I mean, don't call their friends call their family call their relatives call their tenants right and try to reach someone else so deal machines feature with the unlimited skip tracing where you can scroll through and see a bunch of different owners is something that you know we're really excited about and hope uh, to be able to use more and more uh, but we were using white pages to get the numbers in. And then my second deal came from a foreclosure uh, because I think that's what it was. It was like, we didn't target foreclosure as our first round, but our first deal was in foreclosure. So we're like, oh, for, you know, shiny objects and foreclosures must be where it is. Our second deal was like 27 grand in foreclosure. And then from there, I think we got desperate. Like, I think I was just like, man, no one's picking these phones up. So I just started randomly driving people in foreclosure and we had we were using air tables on the road and marking if we contacted them and stuff and then we were like okay well what if we systemized it like ups and made a route and uh man i've had probably 10 15 different drivers and people i've taught to wholesale work under that model um and we've really really systemized it now with some higher end stuff but um that right there is a zero to $100,000 wholesale model where you don't have any money at all, but you got a car, whether you're Uber driving, I mean, this data is free, right? I mean, whether you're spending the minimum or the trial or a deal machine and you just pull that tiny list and you just drive those houses while you've got your Uber turned on or, you, you know, it's you're dedicating a few days a week and then you're building your own list. I would pay. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. I would pay for everyone's drive for dollar list. 
Like, I wish there was a way to just be like, hey, where are all the, you know, drive for, where's the drive for dollar lead graveyard? Because I know so many people have just scoured my town looking for leads. And I'm like, and they probably, you know, it's like that digging for gold metaphor where like they just stopped right before that hitting that right. vein. Or they didn't mark it at all. Right. And I'm out here like doing it myself. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you can put a purpose behind your driving for dollars, that's definitely a, a jet fuel to a wholesale career. And what are some goals you're looking forward to in 2024? Um, we uh, plan or like to make uh, $3 million in wholesale uh, revenue. I'd like to put a million in my pocket, uh, 10 deals a month, $100,000 uh, a month or more. Uh, me and my wife have a goal of moving south. We're talking about start a family, all that good stuff. Well, thank you, Matthew, so much. Um, yeah. Really appreciate you sharing your story. And this will come yeah, out definitely. in a week or so. Cool. Yeah, well, uh, we love Deal Machine, and we appreciate the opportunity uh, to be on here. Um, and we're excited to tune in and see what else uh, people are doing and uh, continue to be a part of the community. Um, but I appreciate y'all having me on. You're welcome. All right. Have a great day, man. Thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast.